Hi, so today I'm going to read another message that I received ever since I did that Show Me Your Success, Not Your Money video on Patreon and Kickstarter. So the whole idea with that video series is that I wanted people to show me what it is they're actually doing with the content I put up rather than just blindly donating. I want to see how, what you've achieved. Now, I got this message from Michael. I'm going to read it. I'm terrible at writing, so please forgive the structure of this. I started watching your videos about two years ago. At the time, we only did the basics like iPod batteries and bought people new devices if we tore a pad. Oh, how silly I now know that was. I was actually held back at my job since everyone thought it was a waste of time for two people to know how to solder. Fast forward to a year ago, the owner's brother-in-law opened another store, and I moved up to it since I knew how to do all the repairs. Well, we were slow being a new store. So I had plenty of time to watch your videos and experiments with the crappy combo hot air I had and play with Arduino stuff that helped me understand how circuits work. I had mi some minor success with a few Mac boards, and the owners thought it was a great idea to send me to practical board repair school where I got a chance to use proper equipment. Oh, the shopping list I came back with. Sure, you can make it work with a crappy iron, but the ease the hacko solders with and the quick swap tips, it became much easier making things do what I wanted them to. After watching your videos and seeing how you shake and knock things off by accident and treat it like no big deal and simply fix what you broke gave me the confidence to attempt things I would normally think was beyond my ability. We now no longer outsource. It's a great feeling being able to fix these things, turning oops into give me a minute. Your videos are a continuing source of knowledge, good advice, and entertainment. I would leave a link to a few pictures, but people are weird on here. Yes, they are and I'm too lazy to comb through for things people shouldn't have access to. Thank you again. I would not be where I was today without your videos. Now, what I, wanna, I don't want to necessarily focus on, you know, the, the classes I teach or how amazing I am as a teacher or anything with the videos like that. I, I don't want to focus on, on me there so much as I want to focus on another question that I often get, which is why do you leave all the flaws in there? Why is it that you're so unprofessional? Why are you putting up material on the, on the Internet that shows people that you make these mistakes on customer devices? The reason I leave all these videos up or I fuck something up are, are twofold. A, I realize that any self-respecting individual um, will understand that over the course of somebody's work day that they are going to screw something up. And that anybody, the people that I would actually want as my own customers, the people who are not douchebags are going to understand that I will screw things up every now and then. And it's not necessarily about not screwing anything up. It's about whether or not you fix it. And when it comes to other technicians, every other technician in every field imaginable understands that sometimes you will screw something up. It's simply about, again, as he said, turning oops into give me a minute. That's the confidence that I want to give you, which is why I include every single screw up in these videos. I don't edit any of it out. The only editing that I do in these videos is to edit together clips that are done on different days because sometimes I do have you know, funny things at work that I have to leave for or editing out me going to the bathroom or me taking a phone call. Otherwise, there is no editing. You get to see every single thing that goes on in these videos. And the reason I do that is because I remember the lack of confidence I had when I first tore a pad, when I first screwed something up. I remember working on a console module for an SSL J9000 about 10 years ago, and I remember the, just the, the feeling of wanting to puke when I screwed something up on that. Even though the thing that I screwed up was something that was very easily fixable, I wasn't thinking about how to fix it. My mind wasn't fixated on how can I make the problem go away? How can I logically repair it? What did I do wrong? What is the effect of what I did wrong? And how can I fix it? My mind was, that's a $500,000 console. Oh my God. These modules are $6,000. Oh no, what did I do? I'm gonna get fired. I'm gonna get fired. I'm never gonna work in this industry. God, I'm gonna get fired. Oh my God, I can't put this on my resume. <laughs> It was just, it, all these thoughts were going through my head. And the thing is, no, as long as those thoughts are going through your head, you're not actually gonna fix what you did wrong. So rather than focus on fixing the pad that I ripped, I was focusing on, I'm gonna get fired. Oh my God. Oh, and, I, and I know that you're doing that. I don't want you to do that. So the reason that I edited everything out, as he said, is so that you can turn oops into give me a minute. And I'm happy to see that he did it. So thumbs up and good stuff.